is a tutorial on graphing and formulating inequalities. An inequality is any expression or equation that doesn't have an equal sign in it or has some other sign than an equal sign. The first inequality we're going to talk about is the not equal to inequality. The not equal to inequality is just represented by this equal sign with a slash through it. And this just means that one number, or whatever's on the left side of our expression, is not equal to whatever's on the right hand side of our expression. So you could say that 3 is not equal to 2, or 5 is not equal to negative 7. You could also say that x is not equal to y, or you could say that x is not equal to 3. Well, if you said x is not equal to 3, that would mean x can be any number other than 3. So if x equals 2, that would validate this expression. If x was equal to 1, that would validate this expression. As long as x is not equal to 3, this expression is correct. The next inequality we're going to talk about is the less than sign. This just means whatever's on the left hand side of our little arrow here, which is the less than sign, is less than whatever's on the right hand side. So we could say that 2 is less than 3, or 4 is less than 5, or we could say that x is less than y. If we said that x was less than 3, that would mean x could be any number that's less than 3. So if x was 2, that would make this expression correct. If x was 2.99, that's still less than 3, so that would make this expression correct. This just means that x can be any number that's less than 3. Now our third type of inequality is the greater than sign, which is just another arrow that just points the other direction than the less than sign. And it means exactly opposite than the less than sign. So we would say that 3 is greater than 2, or 5 is greater than 4, or x is greater than y. And if we said that x is greater than 3, that would mean that x can be any number that's bigger than 3. So x could be 3.01, x could be 5, x could be 100. As long as this number is greater than 3, this expression is correct. Now our fourth type of inequality is the less than or equal to sign, which if you look at it, it is kind of a combination of the less than sign and an equal sign. It's a less than sign and then it just has this bar underneath it. So if we had the less than or equal to, we could say that 2 is less than or equal to 3 or 4 is less than or equal to 5, but we could also say that 4 is less than or equal to 4, because the equal sign still counts. So if we said x is less than or equal to y, we could also say that x is less than or equal to 3. Now if x is less than or equal to 3, that would mean, again, 2 would work, and this expression would be correct, also mean 1 would work, but it would also mean that 3 would be an acceptable answer because of the equal sign. So you could say 2 is less than or equal to 3, 1 is less than or equal to 3, but you could also say that 3 is less than or equal to 3, and then this expression would still be correct. Now our last type of inequality is the greater than or equal to sign, which is just like the less than or equal to sign, except it's opposite. And again, it's indicated by this arrow that's pointing to the right and then the equal sign underneath it. So to make this correct we could say that 3 is less or greater than or equal to 2, 5 is greater than or equal to 4, but again because of the equal sign we could still say that 5 is greater than or equal to 5. Now if we had x is greater than or equal to y and y was equal to 2, we would have x is greater than or equal to 2, that would mean 3 would work, 4 would work, 100 would work, and 2 
with all the acceptable answers for x that would make this expression correct. Now let's talk about how to graph inequalities. When you graph an inequality, you usually graph it on a number line. So if we had x is not equal to 4, again this means that x can be any number other than 4. So to graph this on a number line, we would go to 4 and we would put an open circle that looks something like that. That means that x cannot be equal to 4. But since x can be any other number, we would fill in our number line like so. And the reason why we fill in our number line is because all of these other numbers are all possible values for x. x can equal 1 because 1 is not equal to 4. x can equal negative 3 because negative 3 is not equal to 4. And likewise, x can be equal to 5 because 5 is not equal to 4. So the graph of x not equal to 4 is just an open circle to show that 4 is not a possible number and then you would fill in your number line for all the rest of the numbers to show that they are all valid points for x. Now let's try graphing the less than and the less than or equal to signs. Here we have the first expression x is less than 4. Now since x is less than 4 that means x can be any number less than 4. So x can be 3.99. x can be negative 2. It can be any number less than 4. Well, it also can't equal 4 because 4 is not less than 4. So what you would do is you'd come to 4 on the number line. And again, you would put that open circle to indicate that 4 is not a possible answer. And then since x can be any number less than 4, you would fill in your number line with everything to the left of 4 because all of these numbers are all possible values for x. 2 is less than 4 so it's okay. Negative 2 is less than 4 so that's a valid answer too. But 5 is not less than 4 so it's not a valid answer. So again you just put your open circle where 4 is because it's not a right answer and then you would fill in every number to the left on the number line. Now if we're going to graph x is less than or equal to 3, you would do this the same way. Instead of you would put a closed circle at 3 because 3 is a valid answer now because we have a less than or equal to 3. So 3 makes sense. 3 is less than or equal to 3. Remember, it's less than or equal to, so 3 is a valid point. So you put your filled in circle on 3, and then again, you would fill in your number line with every number to the left of 3, because they're all valid points for x. So now let's try graphing the greater than or greater than or equal to sign. Here we have x is greater than a negative 3. Now negative 3 is not a valid point because negative 3 is not greater than negative 3. So again you would come to negative 3 and you would put an open circle to indicate that negative 3 is not a valid point. Now since this is greater than you would instead fill in all the numbers to the right of negative 3 because all of these numbers are greater than negative 3. Negative 1 is greater than negative 3. 2 is greater than negative 3. Again, any number, including 2.99 or negative 2.99, are all bigger numbers than negative 3. So you put your open circle at negative 3, and then you indicate that it's every point to the right of that on the number line by filling it in. Now let's graph x is greater than or equal to a positive 1. Now just like when we did the less than or equal to sign, 1 is a valid point. 
So instead of an open circle at one, we would put a closed circle at one or a filled in circle at one. And then again, we would fill in every point on the number line to the right of one because all of these numbers are greater than one. Now let's talk about how we write inequalities. If we were given a word problem or we were trying to apply this to something that happened in real life, we would have to know how to read it and then write our inequality. So if we're told that x is greater than or equal to negative 3, we would start with our x and then we would put our greater than or equal to sign and then the negative 3. x is greater than or equal to negative 3. If we wanted to say that negative 3 is less than negative 1, we would say negative 3 and then our less than sign is negative 1. So negative 3 is less than negative 1. If you ever get confused about which one is the less than or greater than sign, try to remember that regardless of what sign you use, it will always point towards the smaller number. So negative 3 is less than negative 1, we know that, so then our sign will point towards the smaller number, or in this case it will point to negative 3. If we had a 4 and a 2, and we didn't know what sign to put, we could just draw our sign that points to the smaller number, which is 2. And then to read this, that would mean that 4 is greater than 2. In our last example, we see y is less than 2. Well, that's pretty simple. We put down our y, we put down our 2, and then if it's less than, that means y is our smaller number, so then our less than sign looks like that. Now let's do a little bit more practice with graphing inequalities. Here we have x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Now since it's equal to negative 2, it's a filled in circle at negative 2, and then it's greater than or equal to negative 2, so any number bigger than negative 2 is also an answer. So you fill in everything to the right on your number line. Another easy way to remember this is if you want to know which direction to fill in on your number line, your sign will kind of point you the way. This greater than sign points to the right. So you know you have to fill in all the numbers to the right of negative 2. Our next one, y cannot equal to, well since it can't equal to, we put an open circle at 2. But that also means that y can be any other number we want it to be. So then you would just fill in the rest of the number line. Because all of these numbers would be a valid answer as long as y does not equal 2. Here we have z is greater than 1. Well, it's not a greater than or equal to, it's just a greater than sign. So you would put an open circle at 1 because 1 is not greater than 1 or 1 is not a valid answer. That's why you get the open circle. And then since it's greater than, you fill in everything to the right because all of these numbers are all greater than 1. And then our last example, x is less than 3 fourths. Again, there's no equal sign. It's not x is less than or equal to, it's just less than. So you go to about three-fourths and you put your open circle and then it's any number less than three-fourths so you fill in everything to the left. Again, because all of these numbers are less than three-fourths and they're all valid answers for x. So now let's try applying what we've learned. Sugar Ray Robinson is considered to be, by some people, the best welterweight boxer of all time. Now a welterweight boxer must weigh at least 140 pounds, but must weigh less than 147 pounds. So here we have two numbers. We have 140 pounds and 147 pounds. Well, we know a welterweight boxer must weigh at least 140 pounds. Well, the words at least mean that 140 pounds is an acceptable weight to box at the welterweight level. 
So if I called weight x, that would mean that a welterweight boxer must weigh greater than or equal to 140 pounds. Because at least means 140 pounds is an acceptable answer. That's why we use the equal sign also. Now we're also told but he, that a welterweight boxer must weigh less than 147 pounds. Now it doesn't say 147 pounds must be less than or equal to, it's just weigh less. So that also means that X must be less than 147 pounds. Now if we put those together, it's common to write it like this. 140 must be less than or equal to X, which must be less than 147. Now notice, when I swap the X and the 140 on different sides of our inequality, I had to switch the inequality around. Remember, it always points at the smaller number, so here it was pointing at 140. So when I turn this around, it still has to point at the 140. This means that X is greater than or equal to 140. This means 140 is less than or equal to X. And if you think about it, that means the same thing. Now how do we graph this? Because this is our expression. But we have two conditions here. We have the 140 and the 147. So let's do this in two different pieces. We know X has got to be greater than or equal to 140. So if we go to 140 on our number line, we would have a solid point, and then we would color in all the points that are greater than 140 which would be all of the points to the right of 140. And then we also have a second condition that says x has to be less than 147. So we would go to 147 on a number line and we would put an open circle because 147 is not a valid weight to be a welterweight. And then we would cover in, color in everything to the left of that point. Well because x has to be between these two numbers the only points that are valid are the points between these two numbers. So to graph this, we would put our open circle at 147, and then we would put our closed circle at 140, and then we would col color in all the points in between these two circles, because these are the only numbers that are between 140 and 147. Now 147 gets the open circle because it doesn't have an equal sign, but 140 does because it does have an equal sign. And this completes the tutorials on graphing and formulating inequalities.